Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. So I feel like actual rubbish today and I, it's weird. The, the whole lockdown thing has had me over here being super productive and feeling actually okay to today feeling like everything is terrible and basically long story short, I hope you guys are okay. I fully understand that this is an incredibly hard time, especially if we're thinking about sustainability and even the question how to be sustainable during a pandemic can be overwhelming. So thank you for joining me for today's video. This is gonna be some thoughts and feelings and how to actually move through this situation and think about sustainability, how you wanna move forward Oh, hello, Itchy. How you want to have a beautiful little cat to come and make you feel better when you don't feel very good. Oh, actually, Itchy, you're gonna be very loud. Sorry. Where were we? So the lockdown. Okay, the UK is in lockdown right now and it looks as though it's gonna be extended even though we were just about to come to, we're in our last week of it. <sighs> And lots of people online have been asking me about sustainability and how I'm trying to be more sustainable at home, how I'm even trying to be sustainable during this time. And I thought I would talk you through my, my thought processes, how I'm trying to navigate being sustainable right now. And also I have a few tips that I've written down to help you be more sustainable if you're in the mindset to do so. This is not a video to put pressure on you guys to be more sustainable. It is simply uh, to offer you an aid if you do want to progress in some way, but also to give you permission if you need it to just put yourself first, look after your health and make sure that your mental health is definitely coping during this unprecedented, really quite sci-fi-ish-esque crisis that we are facing. Everyone deals things with things very, very differently and I deal with things on a day-to-day -day differently. Yesterday, I was the happiest person in the entire world. I was, I felt high, not sure why, and I got so much done, I felt okay, everything was fine. And today I'm like, everything is terrible. So let's talk about sustainability. Okay, let's just get into the first one. First of all, I think you need to take the time to chill and lower your expectations. Lowering your expectations of what you can achieve during this time is instrumental, not only for your mental health, but also for your sustainability goals. Because if you are trying to still do the same amount of things as you were before, it's just not gonna happen and it's gonna really demotivate you and make you think that you can't achieve or are capable of anything. Accessibility to sustainable things are hard even during the best of times. And so trying really hard to think about actually what can you achieve during this time, if anything at all, and what your expectations or where your expectations really should be. For example, if you are lucky enough, like I am in London, to have lots of zero waste shops, they have now changed everything, so they're doing a delivery service, etc., which is really, really cool. But if you don't live in an area like that, which you have that kind of service, you're gonna have dramatic reductions in the accessibility to zero waste or sustainable things that you can. Really lowering your expectations or adjusting them to your new situation is so important. Even if that means my mental health is at a two every day, when usually it's at an eight or a nine, that is also warrant a readjustment. You know, I don't want you to fuss and worry about things like extra packaging um, when, to be honest, pe because people are stockpiling, there might be things that are just not available to you anymore. So it's so important that you really readjust to your circumstance, to your mental health, to what you have accessible and to the bloody world crisis that we are literally going through. The sec one, the sec one. Oh, words are not today for me. The second one, slightly more practical, is to focus on food. I just made a video called A Week of Lazy Vegan Lunches. It's just about looking through your cupboards and trying really hard to focus on the food that you already have. There are amazing websites and stuff out there now that you can just type in the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and voila! It will come up with a recipe for you guys to try and explore different things, but with the stuff you already have. Our government has made it very clear that we should not be going out unless it's super, 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 super essential things. So try and go through your cupboards first. My parents have so many random things here that they just bought thinking, oh, this is nice, and then never ate it. So I have been experimenting with the foods that are in their cupboards and making them dishes, trying to be like, let's try and use these weird ginger and wasabi gluten-free noodles, because they sound delicious. Actually, 
<laughs> to be fair, they were delicious. But they buy things like nutritional yeast and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna try this. And then they just never use it. So I've been finding ways to incorporate that into our diet and into our lunches and dinners and stuff to use up that food before going to a shop. Reducing food waste at home is a really great place to start because you're, you're already kind of incorporating those things into your daily life. You have to eat every day and it's just a good low maintenance place to start. And it saves you money because you're not buying new things. Also, you're not going out unnecessarily because you shouldn't be. Also, you can experiment with things that you really like, like pesto, for example. There is wild garlic galore in the UK right now, and we have loads of it. So I've been using some of that and trying to find other ways, like pine nuts, for example. We don't have any of those, but we have some UK-grown hazelnuts in our cupboard that are oh, delicious. So I toasted them, got rid of their skins, shoved them in a blender with my wild garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. Voila. Delicious wild garlic pesto. Honestly. There are so many things you can do with the things that you have. I guess number one and two are kind of the same. The next one is to support ethical fashion companies right now and do not support fast fashion. Now is a great time more than ever to say no to fast fashion. And it's for many reasons. And I am just, I am so angry. All of the news I have been reading makes me so angry because their response to this crisis has been absolutely appalling. So like ASOS, for example, some of their factory workers in the UK have not been practicing social distancing, not because of the workers' fault, obviously, but because ASOS have not put these restrictions in. They're also forcing their workers to work. Also, not only is Sports Direct already incredibly unethical, not that these are guys of fast fashion, but they're kind of retailers who are absolute the CEO or the founder or whatever he is of Sports Direct genuinely tried to claim that gym shops are essential. They don't even get paid fair wages, let alone would they practice social distancing, let alone would he ensure that they were in any way kept safe. Like it's, it's actually embarrassing and incredibly revealing. And that is one of the... <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's a positive because there is nothing positive about a pandemic. I would say it's the, one of the things that has come to light during this time is how brands and fast fashion in particular have responded to this crisis, as I said before. Loads, I think there's a meme going around everywhere, or not, I don't know what you'd call it, like a stat sheet going around everywhere, showing you which suppliers, or which, sorry, fast fashion brands have canceled their orders and who have actually paid their suppliers. And I think Primark is right up at the top of not, of owing just millions and millions of pounds to their suppliers who they're not gonna pay. And this means that our factory workers are the ones who are gonna be furloughed or they're gonna just lose their jobs. They're not gonna get any compensation and they are already treated incredibly unethically and they're gonna be treated even more so because of what's happening. And you know what really, really, really annoys me? Arcadia, which is owned by Philip Green, asked for a bailout from the government. And do you know why they asked for a bailout? Because Philip Green is a billionaire and he didn't want to have to pay out of his own pocket to keep places like Zara, etc., afloat. <sighs> Nothing makes me more annoyed than billionaires asking for help. Are you joking? You don't even care about your factory workers. Anyway, wow, we have got on to way not how to be sustainable. These are the thoughts and feelings going through my head about sustainability whilst we are in this whole pandemic, whilst we are thinking about how to be more sustainable. And this is one of the reasons why I just hate fast fashion companies. And I know lots of people do rely on them because they are much more affordable, but now more than ever is a time that I would really ask you and you know implore you to think about supporting ethical companies instead. At the end of the day, Arcadia can be bailed out by their own CEO or founder, or whatever he is, but little small independent shops really, really, really do depend on consumers like us to still purchase from them, even if they can't fulfill those orders quite yet. And I don't wanna put pressure on you, obviously, if you've been furloughed, you've lost your job, you have job insecurity, you have lots of um, worries when it comes to your income currently, of course, don't worry. You don't have to, you know, do anything. But if you do have some job security, like for example, I am quite secure right now. I want to help support ethical companies because I want them to still be here at the end of this pandemic. I want them to still be able to thrive and help us build a better, more ethical, more sustainable world after, after this crisis has finally ended. Okay, let's move on to another one, a little bit more uh, <laughs> upbeat. 
one. So I have had a lot of trouble reading because when I'm stressed or anxious or worried about, you know, anything, concentrating on reading is really, really hard. So I've been looking to audiobooks and films and documentaries, etc., about sustainability and climate change. So if you do want to learn and you do have the capacity to do so in terms of your mental health um, and, and time as well, then listening to audiobooks can be a really, really, really good way to kind of absorb that information without putting too much pressure on yourself. Also, if you can't absorb information from reading because it's very, very difficult at this time, as it is for me, then definitely listening is a really great, great option. Apparently Libby is a free, have I said that right? Is a free one that you can use to rent books. But also apart from books, you could read documentaries because they are even less kind of, they, they need less what is this? They need less brain power. Today, guys, I have less brain power. The True Cost, that's a great one if you want to learn about fast fashion. If you are just as annoyed as I am about fast fashion and billionaires. Has anyone else found that their memory just sucks right now? Okay, the next one. To be honest, I think from what I've seen, people are really split. Lots of people are still buying loads and loads of stuff and other people who have obviously been furloughed, etc., are not really buying anything at all. And for those of you who are buying, still buying lots and lots of stuff, I would really try to take a look at the way you are consuming. Is it the same as you were consuming when you were not on lockdown or isolation? Or has it really dramatically changed because you're bored and you want to buy something or you do want to support a company or you are buying things for lockdown that you won't use afterwards. I think now is the time to really look at the way that we consume. I mean, the amount of things that I used to waste money on, honestly, and I claim to be a sustainable person, is actually embarrassing. This has given me some time and space to think about because I have not left the house. I've been to the shops once in the last three slash four weeks. And when I say shops, I mean a supermarket. I do not mean the shops. <sighs> And it's just made me think about the things that I have bought. I did buy this nose ring online, but that was because I was wearing an earring as a nose ring and guys, it looked stupid, like really stupid. But apart from that, I have noticed how many things and I'm trying to take stock of those things has been really good for me. Maybe even writing down when you think, oh, I'd really like this thing. Write it down. Would you really like that thing? Are you trying to be more conscious or are you just thinking, I'm bored? I'm bored, which is totally understandable, obviously. Maybe just have a little thing, bring yourself to consciousness about that. Does that sound like a really annoying thing to say, bring yourself to consciousness? I mean, don't bring yourself. I mean, bring those things to your consciousness to understand what it is that you're really feeling. Like the other day, I was bored. So, and I love cameras, obviously. So I was looking through the secondhand camera shop and I was like, mmm, that is a great lens. That, my friend, is a great lens. And my sister was like, what are you doing? You have, you have all the stuff you need. You don't, what are you, what are you doing? And I just thought, I'm bored. <laughs> I am bored. So I wrote it down and then put it away and just thought, I don't need it. I don't need it. One last thing that I would like to say is I think it's really important right now to monitor the actions of your governments and how they are reacting to this crisis. I don't think any government is perfect obviously. I don't think any situ any way to react to this is perfect, but I think that the way that governments and, as I said before, fast fashion and other brands, etc., do respond to something like this is very telling of how they will then govern the country after this as well. And one thing that really kind of comes to mind is Boris Johnson, he stood there and he clapped for the NHS at 8 p.m. like people in the UK are doing to say thank you for all the work that they're doing. And yet he is more than happy to make drastic cuts to the NHS to make sure they're underfunded and understaffed. And also part of the reason why we are worried right now is because the NHS don't have enough beds and that is due to cuts, they don't have enough staff, which is due to cuts due to a conservative government. Do you want to be voting for this leader, this government, when the next opportunity arises? Do you genuinely believe that the way that they are governing the country now has the vulnerable in mind and not just the wealthy? Do they have a, the Green New Deal in mind? Do they have climate change at the forefront 
of their policies. This is something we need to consider and this is a great opportunity when you're thinking about how can I be more sustainable? Thinking about your government and how they react to these situations is a perfect way to really engage your sustainable brain and think. Are these people really caring about the most vulnerable? Because when a pandemic like this comes comes to the world, those who are marginalised, those who are at the forefront, on the front lines of this situation are the ones who are going to be most affected. The poor, those who are affected by domestic abuse, those who are homeless, you know, those are the people who are affected most right now. And it couldn't, it's not just if they've caught the virus, it's also about job security, furloughed, not having a home, being more at risk because you cannot be in lockdown because you don't have a home to go to. These are things that we really need to consider. Sustainability and social justice are all tied in together. This is why I'm saying it today and why it's important to think about it for the future. Okay, I think I have just ranted at you guys, but I'm on your side, okay? I'm, I'm with you, I'm just very upset and stressed about all of the things that are happening at the moment in terms of the way that fast fashion companies are. Anyway, rant over, rant over, guys, lighthearted. Let's keep things lighthearted. The last thing I want to say is I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to worry about being super sustainable right now. The onus is not on you. Some things that I personally find really helpful are to write down things for the future. Projects for the future, sustainable things for the future that I want to engage in when I have that mental capacity back to do so or I feel like I'm I'm ready to move on and and you know get there. Get to that space. You don't have to be sustainable right now. You just don't. But there are some things you can do if you want to. But I'm gonna leave it there because this is getting quite long and I just feel, I don't know, let me know how you guys are feeling in the comments below. I really would love to hear and to just check in. And if you have any ideas for being sustainable right now, please let us know because I'm sure everyone else would like some more lighthearted ideas than my rant. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Give it a like if you liked it and you wanna see more videos and I'll see you guys soon. Please chill. Take care of your mental health. Take care of you. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.